live from News Channel 5. Falling in love with a narcissist can wreck your life. Lisa Scott, my guest today, says she learned that lesson the hard way. She writes about it in a new book called It's All About Him, How to Identify and Avoid the Narcissist Male Before You Get Hurt. Thank you for joining us, oh, thanks Lisa. Thanks for having me. So how do you define narcissist? A narcissist is someone with a self-inflated, puffed-up ego. They must be the center of attention. They're always right. They have to be in control. But underneath it all, they really are quite insecure, and they overcompensate for this by projecting an image of superiority. Now, we all have a little bit of narcissism, don't Absolutely. we, where we become too yes. self-focused? Yes, there's healthy narcissism, and then there's unhealthy narcissism. So what we're talking about here is when it gets to an extreme where the individual is so obsessed with themselves that they have no capacity to see that anyone else has feelings and so it makes it very difficult to be in a relationship with someone like that. <laughs> and it's actually classified as a mental disorder. It is. In 1980 the American Psychological Association diagnosed narcissistic personality disorder as a full-blown personality disorder in the same cluster of families as borderline personality disorder. So it is a severe condition and people should be aware of it. So there is treatment available for it. It is, as, as it's a personality disorder, it is difficult to treat. People can become aware that they are narcissistic, what we call pathologically narcissistic, that's when it's unhealthy, and they can work on it, but the diagnosis or the prognosis, I should say, is, is somewhat weak because it's so ingrained in an individual. Uh, it, it's something that happens at, in childhood at about age four or five. So what should women look out for? Because you say you went from one, I guess your marriage, to a narcissist. I was and then married, got right yeah. into a relationship with another. I did, because it is very difficult. In the beginning, they put on a wonderful act. They're very charming. Uh, they know what you want to hear, and they know what you want to see, and they become that character. They're great actors. Uh, and then once you settle down with them, you realize that they lack empathy. The thing that's most difficult about a narcissist is they have zero empathy. And so in the beginning, they will put an act on to show you that they're very compassionate and mimic these emotions, but in reality, it's not there. So I've come up with six red flags to recognize a narcissist early on in a relationship. The first is, he's too good to be true. <laughs> you know, there's a reason for the old adage, if it's too good to be true, it is. So be mindful of that. If he has everything you've ever wanted, question it. Uh, the second thing is he talks only about himself. If 80% of the time the conversation revolves around him, you may be dating a narcissist. That's uh, a lot of men. A lot of men, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think men are <laughs> raised to talk about themselves yeah, and not to be, you know, focused on the, mm -hmm. the woman. Right, right. It is somewhat inherent and you just, you need to be mindful of it. Women can be just as narcissistic, since you raised that point. Women are just as narcissistic or can be. However, 75% of narcissists are male, according to studies, and I think one reason for this is because men have more opportunities to be in a position of power or in a position to abuse their power. So that's really where that stat comes from, in my opinion. Another red flag? And another red flag, the third one, is that he's obsessed with his image. Uh, narcissists are brought up to believe in a judgmental social system where if you're beautiful, thin, you're rich, smart, you will be loved. If not, forget about it. So everything is image, image, designer labels, fancy cars, etc. The uh, fourth is he's controlling. Early on in a relationship, they will be very controlling. They need to know where you are at all times. So that's a red flag you need to look for. Uh, and then, of course, empathy, zero empathy. Uh, Lisa, in her work life, is in HR. So you have another book coming out about narcissism in the workplace. Yes, I will be writing about narcissism in the workplace. Uh, corporate America as a whole overall, you know, we look at what's going on in society with uh, the destruction of uh, our banks and so forth. And it's important to understand if you're working in a narcissistic organization, how to cope. You know, if you're in a relationship, you have a choice. If you're working with someone, you need to learn how to cope. Or it could be a family member, you need to learn how to cope. So that will be my next book. Lisa Scott, thank you very much for joining thank us. You. This book is called It's All About Him, and we'll see you when you write your next book. Thanks. <laughs> also, if you have any questions for financial analyst Julie,